We're back. We're back. Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to act one, scene five. Kind of a big showstopper moment here mm -hmm. uh, when Romeo and Juliet finally meet. Where we left off last time, Romeo and his bro Eos were going to the party. Uh, they were on their way. Well, they have now arrived. Uh, the party's in full swing. Capulet, Daddy Capulet is quite drunk. Uh, he's very obsessed with needing more candles, um, as you will see soon. Uh, party's in full swing. Romeo and the crew walk in. Romeo sees Juliet before anything even begins. Um, and then we're going to see that Tybalt kind of overhears him and recognizes his voice. A bit of drama coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever you are ready, the serving men come forth with napkins. Where's Pot Pan that he helps not to take away? He shift a trencher? He scrape a trencher? When good manners shall lie all in one or two men's hands, and they unwash too, tis a foul thing. Away with the joint stools, remove the court cupboard, look to the plate. Good thou, save me a piece of march pan, and as thou loves me, let the porter let in Susan Grindstone and Nell. Anthony, in pot pan. Aye, boy, ready. You are looked for and called for, asked for and sought for in the great chamber. We cannot be here and there too. Cheerly, boys, be brisk a while, and the longer liver, liver, and the longer liver take all. Be they move aside. Be uh, there. Servants leave. <laughs> Good job. Uh, enter Capulet and his household, all the guests and gentlewomen, uh, to Romeo, Mercutio, Benvolio, and the other maskers, people in masks. Maskers. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Ladies that have their toes Ooh. unplagued with corns will walk about with you. Uh, my mistresses, which of you all will now deny to dance. She that makes dainty, she elsewhere hath corns. Am I come near you now? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear such as would please. Tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. Music plays and they dance. A hall, a hall, give room and foot it, girls. More light, you knaves, and turn the tables up and quench the fire. The room has grown too hot. Ah, uh, Surat, this unlooked for sport comes well. Nay, sit, nay, sit, good cousin Capulet, for you and I are past our dancing days. How long is it now that since last yourself and I were in a mask? By our lady, thirty years. What, man, tis not so much, tis not so much, tis since the <laughs> nuptial of Lucentio. Come, Pentecost, as quickly as it will, some five and twenty years, and then we masked. Tis more, tis more. His son is elder, sir. His son is thirty. Will you tell me that his son was but a ward two years ago? What lady is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night as a jewel rich, no, as a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady o'er her fellows shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand and touching hers make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now? For swear it sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This by his voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. <laughs> what, dares the slave come hither covered with an antique face to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now, by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Boy, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain Romeo. Hmm. Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman, and to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all this town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore be patient, take no note of him. It is my will, the which if thou respect, show a fair presence and put off these frowns, an ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest, I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. What, goodman boy? I say he shall. Go to. Am I the master here or you? Go to. 
you'll not endear him. God shall mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny me and my guests. You'll set a cock a hoop. You'll be the man. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. You're a saucy boy. <laughs> Is it so indeed? This trick may chance to scathe you. I know what. You must contrary me. Nary, tis time. Well said, my hearts. You are a princox. Go, be quiet, or more light, more light. For shame, I'll make you quiet. What cheerly, my hearts. Patience perforce with willful clover meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bit bitterest gall. He exits, and then Romeo takes Juliet's hand. If I profane with my unworthiest hand, <laughs> this holy shrine, the gentle sin in this, my lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Oh, good pilgrim, you do wrong. You do wrong your hand too much. Which manly devotion shows in this? For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands to touch. And palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, <laughs> and grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Well, saints do not move, though grant for prayers' sake. Then move not while my prayer's effect I take. He Thus, kisses her. Woo! <laughs> Thus from my lips, by thine, my sin is purged. Then how my lips, the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips, O oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. He kisses her again. You kiss by the book. <laughs> 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 Madam, your mother craves a word with you. Juliet moves toward her mother. What is her mother? <laughs> <laughs> Mary Bachelor, her mother is the lady of the house, and a good lady, and a, and a wise and virtuous. I nursed her daughter that you talked with all. I tell you, he that can lay hold of her shall have the chinks. Nurse moves away. Is she a Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. Away, be gone, the sport is at the best. Aye, so I fear, the more is my unrest. Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling, foolish banquet towards. Is it even so? Why then, I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches here. Come on, then, let's to bed. Uh, sir, up by my fay, it waxes late. I'll to my rest. All but Juliet and the nurse begin to exit. Come hither, nurse. What is the odd gentleman? The son and heir of old Tiberio. What's he that now is going out of door? Mary, that, I think, be young Petruchio. What's he that follows here that would not dance? I know not. Go ask his name. <laughs> the nurse goes. If okay. he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. <laughs> uh, the nurse returns. <laughs> His name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. Oh, my only love sprung from my only hates, too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious. Prodigal, the birth of love is it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learned even now of one I dance with all. One calls from within, Juliet. Anon, anon, come, let's away. The strangers all are gone. <laughs> they exit. Wow. Very good. <laughs> Act one in the bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <In> the bag. <laughs> Are there, is this, is this three acts? Five. Five? <laughs> what? Five. Now, yeah. I, now, can we touch on this rare interpretation of Juliet as an embarrassed chain smoker? 
Yeah. <laughs> why why did it only come out halfway through? <laughs> Well, oh, I, I, no, I get it. Romeo, Romeo went away, and so she could let a let loose. <laughs> let, uh, let, let go. Yeah. True yeah. colors. Yeah. True colors. Yeah. I feel like that's a voice I've only heard Marat do when he was being Helen of Troy. So it's nice. Yeah. To hear. <laughs> <laughs> There's a context to it. <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh, go through quickly for like reading comprehension, and then we can talk about themes and stuff. Um, right so serving men are just bustling around, you know, where are you? I need you over here, come over here, get away the, the tables. What they're doing is moving the tables from the feast uh, so that there's room to dance. So they're dancing in like the dining room basically, uh, or the same room that they ate in. So they leave, uh, Capulet is just so excited. Uh, he has this whole big thing about how like, oh, every lady who doesn't have corns on their feet is gonna dance. And you know, if she doesn't dance, I bet she has corns trying to get them to like dance or implying yeah. if they don't dance, they have like gross feet, she, which whatever. Oh. Um, so he's just like being like a little crass and a little drunk and a little excited. Uh, go on, everybody dance. He keeps asking for more light, more light, more torches. Um, even as he's going to bed, he's like, more torches over here. Um, yes, <laughs> he wants more light. <laughs> Um, he has a talk with his cousin. Uh, wow, it's been so long since we got to dance with some hot single ladies. How long has it been? 30 years, just about. Uh, <laughs> Romeo comes in, instantly sees Juliet Rosalind out of his mind. I don't think he mentions her again. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. Rosalind. <laughs> Rosalind. The, the woman he was in love with before. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he does not. Um, <laughs> So completely out of mind, he's just like, wow, who is this woman? She's so beautiful. Um, just can't even handle it. There's some nice language uh, around line 55 to 60. Uh, he says, I never saw true beauty till this night, which is a great line because again, a couple scenes ago, he was like, oh, Rosalind is so pretty. I could never think of loving another. And now he's like, I never even saw beauty or knew yeah. love until this very moment, uh, very teenage. Uh, so Tybalt, like, Tybalt sees a Montague, catches it, just clocks him, and, and he, despite the mask and everything, he mm -hmm. asks for his rapier, which is a sword. He's, like, just going to kill him on the spot. Um, <laughs> Capulet calms him down a little bit. He's like, this is a party. Also, you're an idiot. And just, like, <laughs> rails <laughs> against him. Saucy boy. Yeah. You're a saucy boy. Um, that was a meme for a little bit, too. That Shakespeare oh, meme. Yeah. <laughs> you saucy boy um he's just like you gotta endure it just deal with it it's fine um capulet may not have felt that way were he not su in such a good mood uh, but in this moment he's just like don't ruin my party basically don't ruin um, my party. he says that he will set cock a hoop now <laughs> i had to look that up um apparently back in the day when cock fighting so like rooster fighting was um allowed illegal they would have little signs outside. You know how like, um, they have like a sign of a tooth if you were a dentist or whatever. So they have a <laughs> sign of a rooster in a in a circle. Um, and it, it became slang, uh, basically for like a man who was quick to fight. Uh, oh. oh, you're like a cock a hoop. Like, <laughs> um, Can we like bring that rooster. Oh, is that where the term? I don't know <laughs> about the, <laughs> the follow through of that phrase, but um, okay. that's that. Uh, so Capula goes, you're a saucy boy, go away. Uh, Tybalt says, fine, but it's not over. Uh, I won't forget this. So there's a little foreshadowing there. <laughs> then we get actually this, this. very, <laughs> we get this very beautiful moment of Romeo and Juliet finally meeting. Um, their first phrases to each other form a sonnet which is very pretty, uh, mm -hmm. of course, and lots very symbolic there. The language is beautiful. Uh, they do this long extended like metaphor. Romeo is like, oh, like my hand is touching yours and your hand is so pretty. So I must be like dirtying your hand. And I'm so sorry for that. And uh, he's like, oh yes, my lips are two pilgrims ready to kiss you right now. And <laughs> she's like, slow down. <laughs> I haven't even spoken to you yet. Um, <laughs> She's like, oh, no, no, your hand is not that bad. Like, I might be a, a saint, but like, you are a worshiper and our hands are kissing like we're praying. <laughs> and Romeo's like, oh, our hands are kissing. Don't lips kiss too. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, mm, 
saints have lips indeed, but they use them to pray. Uh, <laughs> and then he's like, then let our lips do what our hands are doing. They pray and you must let them pray or else their faith will turn to despair. Uh, <laughs> she goes, oh yes, saints do bless. She goes, they do not they do not move, but they do grant prayers for prayer's sake. And then Romeo says, oh, they don't move, then, then don't move. Well, I get my wish and then kisses her. Uh, and then goes, great, now your lips have cured my lips of their sins. And then she says, well, if that's the case, then I must have your sin on my lips. And then he goes, oh, that cannot be. Let me take back my sin from your lips and then kisses her again. It's all very um, ridiculous, but like a little suave, honestly, to be like spitting out on the spot as like a 16 year old. So not bad, Romeo. Good luck. And also the, the ultimate diss at the end by Julia. Well, I don't think it's supposed to be a diss. I think it's like, you are a textbook kisser. Also, you kiss by the book, like the Bible. Like, man, that was divine. Uh, I think it, I think it's supposed to be a kiss is very well. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It probably wasn't meant to be the modern diss of you kiss by the book, but... <laughs> is that I think a it's... diss? <laughs> well, usually something's by the book. It's like unimaginative or... Yeah, boring. just standard it. textbook. Oh. But yeah, it could, be, it could be used positively, too. Yeah, I think it's like you, just you do be. everything right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there's also just like the, the extended Damn. metaphor of sin and pilgrims and worshippers and saints. It's oh, all yeah. Holy. Um, which uh, yeah, which we touched on before when he was talking about his uh, eyes being martyrs and all that when he was mm-hmm. pining before. Was the it's queen? Much, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just, it's very much set up as like this holy love, you know. Um, whether or not it really would be, uh, they want to see it that way because it's so powerful. Um, something about the queen? Wasn't she part of the church? So this was like ultra Catholic fan service at the time. No, she Elizabeth. was a she was a Protestant. Uh, she oh, deposed okay. um, her her cousin Mary, who was. But a, it could. No, I mean, it was a Christian nation. Yeah, way, very so. very Christian, just anti Catholic. Which is why it's a big deal when James Stewart takes over a couple of years after this, and he is a Catholic. So Shakespeare was heating up the pews with all these <laughs> uh, holy love in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, we get the contrast, right? Of uh, you get the Queen Mab speech of a bunch of pagan imagery of like prostitutes and and people with wild dreams. Mm. So that, that's vile pagan love. This is holy Christian. Love. This is holy Christian. Yeah, there's some classic, uh, you know, virginal archetypes here of their love being so pure that it is born from them talking about how how religious they are. (laughs) Yes, um, we will pop back to that real quick. I just want to pop through the rest of it. So um, lovely Romeo and Juliet meeting. Uh, She gets called away by her mom. Romeo snags the nurse and is like, so who was that? nurse says oh yeah that's you know the daughter of the mother of the house Mm. uh she's you know uh juliet basically uh she can't get away without saying something like stupid so she's like oh whoever can get a hold of her shall have the chinks and this is a pun for two things um money as in the sound Mm. that coins make when they jingle Mm -hmm. together against each other and then um her vagina because it's like a (laughs) chink in armor like a crevice is what chink means or nothing like, the crevice so whatever nurse oh, um oh, Romeo oh, realizes whatever nurse, <laughs> the, nurse realizes makes, that the nurse makes a lot of the horny she honestly does. she's the horniest nurse i've ever seen but... <laughs> <laughs> Romeo forget the saucy boys <laughs> <laughs> saucy boys and horny nurses yeah. um <laughs> realizes he, he realized that he realizes she's a capulet Capulet decides the party's over, even though he still wants more torches. Uh, then finally, Juliet asks the nurse to go over, find out who Romeo is. Uh, she does. He, she realizes that she is that uh, he is a Montague. Very depressing. That's it. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> so the, the main conflict has been established. Um, okay, so what have we noticed about this piece? Horny. <laughs> I I don't yeah. know how ironic it's meant to be where Romeo says, did my heart love till now? Because 
obviously the first thing I think reading and hearing that line is like, oh, your love, which was so powerful and unshakable, you know, which you based on your, your pure faith is now totally different on a new thing. And I wonder if this is where it's meant to be seen that you're not supposed to be like Romeo or if Shakespeare is just trying to be extra, extra poetic and be like, what is love, but ever changing. And you don't know what it is until it's, it's changed again. And when you see another hot woman, <laughs> but if you take it like super literally, it's like you saw how powerfully he was in love with Rosalind. And if you're meant to take this all straight, it's like, that was that bad. This is even worse. Like, yeah. It's, it's anime power scaling is what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, it's also maybe a bit prosaic. I think it also could just be the simple matter of this is kind of what it is like being a teen when you don't have context for how you're feeling. So, like, he feels that much more strongly, regardless if that's something the audience should kind of affectionately roll their eyes at. Because, I, I mean, that is kind of what it's like when you're a teen, right? Of every emotion you feel is the strongest emotion you have felt, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. So I think it's like very serious on Romeo's perspective, but one would presume all the adults in the audience will roll their eyes and be like, oh, I remember being 17. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also really liked uh, the first joke in this of the second servant man saying, when good manners shall lie all in one or two men's hands and they unwash too, it is a foul thing. Mm. It just, it cracked me up that he's saying like, one or two guys are cleaning everything so that everyone can have such good manners, but their hands are dirty, yeah, cleaning all this stuff. <laughs> and more's the pity. And mm -hmm. I don't know that. Sometimes Shakespeare, his humor does still crack me up. And because I can see that line done in a modern re rewritten in a modern way being a pretty funny joke like mm. it's just the bottom of the barrel workers cleaning everything <laughs> up for everyone else mm. right. certainly covid well oh, there's also the uh, there's kind of a double entendre for the unwashed hands uh, and good manners because they're accusing another one of the serving men of not helping out because mm. he stole some food and he's off eating somewhere mm. oh hot pan Pop. Yeah, oh, but so it's a combination of we can assume they are all kind of there's the literal pun of well they have dirty hands so it's kind mm -hmm. of ironic to have them clean mm -hmm. or what have you and then there's the other element of that one of the servants is is stealing the food instead mm -hmm. of helping do his job. <laughs> you can tell too. Is this is just like J.K. Rowling with the naming. Uh, you get Benvolio, Tybalt, Romeo. Uh, what's it? Pop pan? Does he? Uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, I do think it's, it it rings true in a way, though. Like in the way that um, kitchens always seem to have these nicknames, and you know, just like this camaraderie mm. of people kind of working mm. together. Mm. Um, Another fun fact I learned is that March pan is what they used to call marzipan, like almonds. Yeah. Oh, right. Actually, kind yeah. of, I guess that. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and they're they're stealing that too. I mean, good I on them. I'll say I will say this: good on all the serving men. Better for them to eat it than throw it out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Nice. Shakespeare was kind of the Hello Fresh of his time. <laughs> 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 Indeed. Speaking it's of which, we are willing to be sponsored. <laughs> oh, um, <fresh. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, also, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's another element here with the the kind of Christian romance imagery of. There's a little minor detail here of uh, when they're debating how long it's been since they've danced, where a Capulet implies that it's almost Pentecost. Mm. Um, which Christian holiday, the it, there's a bit of a, a element there because Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit was revealed to the apostles. So there's a bit of that with uh, dramatizing Romeo witnessing Juliet. There's also uh, Pentecost was a popular time for weddings. So it's almost Pentecost when this is all happening and setting up all the Christian imagery. Oh. Uh. It's come Pentecost as quickly as it will, some five and twenty years, and then we ask. So, once Pentecost comes around, it'll have been twenty-five years ago. Mm. So that's not at all necessary for understanding it, but that's just a fun little. Element. It is a fun little. Yeah. Thing. It's an interesting um, thing that he is making it so Christian and holy and 
pure mm. in a way. Um, and I think well, it would just be, oh, go ahead. Well, because if it wasn't that, then they're having an illicit affair might be a bit hard for a Christian audience to cheer on. Mm. Right. And it's like what saves these families is meant to be a good thing as opposed to like, you know, illicit sexual affairs saving the families. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they're, 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 they're murders. Right. I mean, I'm glad that there is a actual romance between the two of them where they are flirting with each other in a way that's very clear they're flirting and they're using holy imagery to flirt which is like you can try talking about god to get laid and you're gonna you might have some trouble if you're not at a church <laughs> but um it's interesting that shakespeare didn't try and like make their love super chase you know what i mean and mm-hmm. just all about like the holiness of our love is like the holiness of our faith and that's what tying us together he's like you know faith is there but also i want to make an actual romance because i wonder if at the time there was more like extremely religious plays that just had two religious characters being religious and not ever like you know touching hands in a <laughs> <mom's kiss. laughs> you know i mean it's like it's really fast but this is I've, I've not read all of Shakespeare's plays, but a lot of the times it's either the couples are already together or they already know that they like each other, you know, like they've already met before, but I don't know. I can't really remember. I'm probably wrong, but I can't remember many where they like meet for the first time in like a normal way where one of them is not a donkey, um, <laughs> <laughs> like flirt and fall in love, even though it only takes 15 seconds, it's actually like established. Legit you can tell flirt. that they both like each other. Right. Right. Yeah, I'd, I'd say the romance, I, the reason this play is still so popular, even though everybody harps on it for being a bad example of a relationship, you know, they give it that like twilight treatment of why is this popular? It's not good, a good advice. The romance in it is really, really good. It's probably it's the best in all of his uh, plays. It's cute. <laughs> yeah, Mariah, you got to play. Tell us your inspiration, <laughs> your transformation of Juliet. Did you feel that extra cuteness? I, I felt the cutest I ever felt. I really felt like Darian's Romeo hand touching my hand. That was yeah, that, was that, that brought the scene to life <laughs> for me as well. Yeah. Dude, you had so much chemistry. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> honestly, honestly we've been waiting for this scene. <laughs> could you guys do like on the side of your um things so I can make a cool thumbnail, like holding? <laughs> oh, other way, no. you have to be going. Other way. No, 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 just one of you. Going. <laughs> Uh, one of you has to go right and the other one go left (laughs) no you have to be opposite (laughs) of each other (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) okay there good perfect (laughs) thank you camera glitched again but at least he's in the same (laughs) oh yes oh thank you Hmm. wow I don't think anything else jumps out. We've got a glad to uh, play with the imparter anytime we're on. <laughs> Yo, uh, switch the table. And we shall assume that you do not have corns on your feet. Uh, so my feet are corny. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 it's like I would a be out there me. dancing. <laughs> it's like Iowa down here, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Um, I have a, a fun fact, and that is that this uh, moment might establish a Shakespearean uh, connected universe. Um, what? And this is <laughs> down on line 145. While Juliet, Juliet's kind of like, who's that? And who's that? And she's just like leading into asking about who Romeo is so that she can like not seem suspicious uh, to the nurse. And she goes, who is that? And the nurse goes, oh, yeah, that's young Petruchio. Oh. So Petruchio mm-hmm. is a character from... Anyone know? <laughs> Twelve. Oh, yeah. Bad. Taming of the Shrew. Like oh, Iron Man. <laughs> what? I'm so Taming glad I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Which but that is another play of Shakespeare's that takes place in Italy. Um, Wait, what's so, the name? Sorry. Taming of the Shrew. <laughs> That's all right. It's not very good. Um, but... <laughs> It is in Italy and it's there. So because he just is such a flitting, hey. fleeting, quick little cameo, uh, it could be mm-hmm. the very same. Uh, oh, it's like Marvel. Yeah. It's, it's a Marvel. <laughs> like the Mar- dude. Well, I, I, I think we've already said Shakespeare was the Marvel of his time. 
I was actually, <laughs> oh. I was thinking of how um, there's an Easter egg in Frozen where I think it's like they have like the tangled, mm-hmm. like Rapunzel there or something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Undo- oh, actually, a lot of Disney movies, right? Yeah, they've, they've got a lot of secrets. <laughs> right, like, o- Olaf shows up in like the Adam Mask movies. <laughs> Yeah, Shakespeare extended it's... universe or just a stock name? Probably never know. Well, yeah. uh, I was gonna I say guess, yeah, much... Shakespeare I... Avengers, but we need to make that happen. <laughs> you want to make Sh- Shavengers happen? Shavengers. I'll Shavenge you. <laughs> wow. That was really, that was the Shakespeare of your time. <laughs> that was it right there. It's Avenger. But I am the Shakespeare of my time. Yeah. Much like the Shakespeare of real life, um, when Romeo says his, uh, she doth teach the torches to, be, to burn bright. This is my favorite pretty writing of this uh, act scene. It's specifically, the so shows a snowy dove trooping with oh. crow as a oh. yonder lady or her fellow shows. I just saw that image so clearly in my mind of like a snowy forest with a dove on the same tree with a bunch of crows. And then when he applies it to seeing a person who stands out like that, I was like, wow, that's actually a, that image came through so clearly, Mm -hmm. even though it's, you know, the whole like, oh, it's 400 years old and still speaks so clearly. But that is like that image in particular. I was like, oh, that's so good. Like I'm stealing that. (laughs) Yeah. And there's also as a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear, like a really bright, earring on a black person <laughs> yeah maybe a little yikes yeah. oh i thought ethiop was a uh, uh like a reference to something that, well e- an ethiopian, ethiopian, ethiopian. <laughs> ethiopian person yeah <laughs> no you know how they of, um, oh it was kind of a catch-all for person from africa um oh, okay at the time yeah. Well, yeah. yeah well in the same way i mean africa comes from a group of people in a small part of tunisia like, oh okay. it, yeah, the Afri were a small North African group of people, and the Romans are like, yeah, everything passed there, Africa. Um. <laughs> oh, that's a very, uh, I get cheek of night now, too. I mean, that's yeah. that's also really pretty. This is this is very pretty, this whole, like, even though it's ironic to me because he's just like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm in it again. I'm lost in the sauce. <laughs> uh, I'm lost in the sauce. <laughs> yeah. Saucy boy lost in the sauce. Uh, well, also, from that from that saucy boy, we do get a little <laughs> bit of Renaissance science when uh, Capulet is telling him to, you know, calm down, Sim- simmer down. He says, uh, "Patrons Lots. perforce with willful willful collar meeting." So collar is yellow bile, the humor uh. which, if you have too much, makes you angry and aggressive. So basically saying, I will swallow my bile. I'll like bite my tongue on this. Uh, makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. So basically he's, he's all cholera. He's all choleric. He's ready to fight. He's swallowing it down. He's all makes choleric him, and ready to go. Make, <laughs> makes him feel sick. And then I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitterest gall. So he's, he's swallowing his bile's rising up. He's swallowing it down. It may seem sweet to his everyone here, but it's going to, but it's going to turn sour. <laughs> yeah, they were just warned uh, by the prince, I think, that if you guys keep starting shit, I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's like, don't start shit at my party. Not only do I want to have a good time, but also we're going to piss some people off. Yeah. You saucy boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then yet more, uh, yet more foreshadowing that Tybalt's going to kill someone later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, to Bobo's type sketch. Yeah, I mean that too, and as well as um, Juliet being like, "Oh, if he's married, my my bed will be my grave," and so <laughs> yeah. um, it's very. I mean, she's dramatic too. It's not just Romeo. She's like, "Well, yeah, oh she gosh, said like, if he's a married man, I'll kill right? him more." Yeah. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it was a very sweet meeting, but you kissed twice. Like, <laughs> the flip side, what a modern concern. God in the, you know, kind of God on the town really hit it off with a guy, and he was like, "Oh God, don't tell me he's married." Mm-hmm. Like that's real. Yeah. That's relatable. Yeah, that's true. Definitely. Yeah. For sure. 
Uh, I think maybe another reason why this play is really sweet is it because the two main lovers are teenagers? Because when you're a teenager, you are much less self-conscious or you are still self-conscious about saying stuff just as it comes to you. And um, I, I think maybe there's the idea that because they're so young and because they're feeling it so strong, they have no ability to control the feeling and sort of like choose their words. It's just all uh, sprouting spontaneously because reading this, it does make me, it reminds me of being like young and in love to read the whole, like my lips to blushing pilgrims while their hands are are (laughs) gently touching at the tips. (laughs) (laughs) So I, uh, I, I think uh, it's a good choice by Shakespeare because teenagers get a bad rep a bunch of time. A lot of people love to shit on them. Uh, because they're no longer teenagers, so they get to yeah. make fun of them and be like, "Oh, I'm out of that zone." Right. But, um, this is a this is one of the this is a part of being a teenager that I actually miss, which was how sort of simple feelings were. You just felt them super strongly, and then you did things, and then later you you hated that you did all those. Things. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Like wow, that was right, that was a mistake. Right. I have my breasts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Too bad I had such strong feelings. <laughs> only love sprung was very my little only filter. hate. Life was more fun. You got to imagine too, the nurse is not a teenager standing watching this, just <laughs> wincing at everything being said. <laughs> oh, oh, she he just took her, kind of there. her sin from him. Oh no, he's taking his sin back. <laughs> he's doing it. <laughs> Okay. Oh. All on your backs already. It's just like that's not how sins work. <laughs> that's not how sins work. Yeah, sin right now. I mean, I I do gotta say the line that sin from my lips, oh trespass sweetly urged, give me my sin again. That that's uh that's Romeo's smoothest line for sure. It's great. Yeah. I love that line. Yeah. <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> it's like every line. Uh, if you used one or two of these lines I- I- in a modern way in real life, it'd be really smooth. It's just, it's just all of them in a perfect sonnet that rhymes. With it. You're just like, yeah. all right. right. <laughs> yeah, I thought it would not be so right. good. This you laid the game down. <laughs> you just laid the game down, fun. man. Essentially, it's like yes. the, hey, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Angel uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, before that was a thing. Before before Shakespeare like invented that. Though. Yeah. Actually, though. And it's like way more clever, way less used, way more original. Like, damn, he laid it down. Yeah. I don't know, but if someone told me that, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> I literally just told you that. <laughs> I would like, hee hee, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Mariah, you went. <laughs> that, wasn't, that, was, that wasn't the text at all. That was just me. I went, until, I yeah, until the chase smoker came out. <laughs> until the chase smoker came out. <laughs> um, I think this is also this, what you guys are describing is a Shakespeare classic. And this is also just a hallmark of good writing that two characters, they take an idea or a theme and they say something and they play off what the other says. And you get uh, you get banter, right? That actually builds on what came before it. This is not just banter and quips, like in movies when in, in the middle of a firefight, two characters go like, huh, same shit, different toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like actually <laughs> about something. We, oh, I, we, we really keep circling movie. around the MCU. This <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, I don't want to hot take this video, but the MC <laughs> is trash. So that's why I keep bringing it up. Something. Ooh, good. Yo, we need to edit that out. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> about to get ratioed. Of the podcast. <laughs> wow. Please shots don't, fired. don't ratio me. I just learned what that meant a few days ago. <laughs> um. Yeah, just, just I was, I was going to add another saucy boy follow up, but I decided not to. What? Uh, I, I was gonna say MCU fans don't look up anything about books, but <laughs> yes, Logan. Oh. <laughs> y'all get ousted. Both of y'all about to get y'all y'all about to get ousted. The let's, classics let's are supposed to be more fun with friends, but <laughs> <laughs> now, well, now we can consider classics with enemies. <laughs> 
We do have Logan. a running list of enemies of the podcast. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Logan is the sauciest boy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Very saucy. And who knew it would come not from having any strong opinions about the text in question, but having <laughs> strong opinions about Doctor Strange too. Yeah. Ooh, remember oh, when he said Aluma Wadi? I want to try. <laughs> what? The worst part about that is I actually like Jonathan Hickman's run of the Avengers comics that the Illuminati is from. <laughs> Rough. Not sure. I like comics. That's why it feels weird to me how much I hate Marvel movies. Wow. So it's, not, it's not comic book bullshit. It's very bland directing and mm. media milled script writing. It's crazy how the books are better in every <laughs> single way than a cash grab movie. Well, I mean, comics are also a cash I mean, grab, but they let, watched, but they let the freaks in. We watched Troy on this channel, so like <laughs> obviously the books are always better. <laughs> the books are always better. Were the books better though? No, let's get we, we skipped through half a billion. <laughs> Not we half. didn't read half. We, no. All right, what well, one fourth? Wait a minute! We you didn't finish, finish your favorite book that you no, bring up any time. We read I, the whole I, thing. <laughs> I blessed these people with not having to read Nestor's soliloquies about God. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Thank you. That's what I'm they're saying. They're saying, we, we they're saying my it. many comments on it. Nestor the Granian Horseman went went <laughs> unremarked all this time. No, we know full well about oh. how boring and long winded <laughs> Nestor is. We we did not skip it all. We just. We, you know, <laughs> he can go on. <laughs> you're, you're saying you won't tell me how many ships the Fithians brought with the Myrmidons under Achilles' command. Okay, we also did skip a lot of book two because why? Um, <laughs> well, we read most of the <laughs> yeah, most of it. We read most of it. We, we, we out. <laughs> oh, my. We have, we have suddenly pivoted hard in the tone and subject of this video. Right. I think it's because we started with overwhelming positivity for the thing we're actually talking about, and our modern cynicism <laughs> compelled a degree of negativity. Yes. You have to balance it out. It's There's now a something out here that we can argue about. <laughs> we're, we're millennials. We're not allowed to just be positive for an entire video. That's fine. Sorry. It's my, I, I started the hate speech. Uh, before, but in my fairness, I hate them so much, and I think they're. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wait, Drew, um, how do you feel about olives? Oh no. <laughs> we're not getting into this, dude. I don't I, I don't like them that much. Woo! <laughs> all right, he's out. Win. Drew's out. I'm sorry, Drew. Why right. you are you, you a big out, olive dude. sucker, Tina? We have an <laughs> olive war, an ongoing yeah. olive war yeah. on the F podcast. It, no. We we I think ended it when I brought the literal olive brand. So I don't know why it's, it's still true. coming up. Yes, <laughs> there was a sign of peace, and then the war is brought back. Well, well yeah. See, all all you did is leave leave time for the two sides to rearm. I mean, do we need to do we need to reassess our our national stockpiles in this conflict? I will accept Drew I'm, I'm on my team up. for this one. <laughs> uh, Lo Logan is clearly on my team. So I, I am. There are some situations where I do not like olives, and there are some types of olives I do not like. But That's olive, some type of olive can be good in more or less any situation. Okay, so okay. it's really my, my team. I actually did yeah. concede several times that <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept them if they're already on my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if they're baked into bread, they can stay. <laughs> but no, I, I don't like it at all. Truly bridging, bri bridging divides. My pr my preference is that they're not there at all, but if they're already there, <laughs> and y'all haven't had them. them. Right, we're not talking about the olives anymore. I, oh, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna y'all. Maybe, maybe this is also the consequence of us not doing any homework for two weeks. We've become uh, we've become unruly. Undisciplined. We've become unruly. <laughs> I mean, I and then do you say that you like olives? Yeah, I do. Okay, that's <laughs> good. You, you I'm <laughs> The thing I know we're we're moving on from the olives. I'm just gonna say Steve has never had an olive, so he might be the tiebreaker there. Um, oh, what? Now I'm gonna say this. What's never? your address? No, I don't believe. I don't believe oil? that. What's your address? <laughs> Wait, olive oil, oil is not avoidable. Yeah, I believe Murat is saying I'm give sure out your exactly. address right here on the podcast. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> yeah, kidding. Murat, please. Aren't you coming out? Can you like put your address like? Yeah, but I mean. 
You want me to put my address in post on the video? <laughs> yeah, you should just kind of like, yeah, yeah. No. Could oh, you also um, read the three numbers on the back of your credit card? <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. And here's my While you're at it, that would be Romeo right. and Juliet need your help to get away from their <laughs> troublesome family. Oh, my God. <laughs> so let's give them a 16-digit code, an expiration date on the front of your parents' credit card, and the three-digit code on the back to help their love come true. Like this video. Save it um, for our Patreon. <laughs> like, just like it. Just shut up. Just like like it. It. <laughs> shut up and like the video. Like it, even though we're going to have to cut out huge parts of it due to strong opinions that have nothing to do with the video. <laughs> this is the one with Saucy Boys. Comment down below about the best or worst pickup lines you have ever heard. Oh, that's, that's a good one. one. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to say, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one with saucy boys, embarrassed chain smoker, and the horny nurse. Boom. Yep. Good. <laughs> Boom. I was gonna say, yeah, give, well. give us a give us a thumbs up if you agree with us, or a thumbs up if you like the MCU. Now we're covered. Nice. So <laughs> if you want to go out and hand kiss with somebody, just make sure you ask first. That's yes. what I'm Correct. saying. Yeah. <laughs> Consent. Boom. Consent. Subscribe. We're assuming, consent. We're yeah. assuming Romeo's uh, consent came through body language because he kind of just kept going for it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if anyone says leave room for Jesus, just recite any of this to them and hope they they accept that as an excuse. <laughs> At your next school dance, if you have to leave room for Jesus, explain that you're just doing <laughs> saints, <laughs> saints and uh, pillars. <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave but room saints for kiss. Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. exactly. let them know that saints kiss by praying with their lips and then Ooh. while they're trying to figure out what that has to do with <laughs> while well, they're trying to figure out <laughs> well, there's also uh, there's also that pun about the palmers because you're talking about the palm of your hand but also the people who greeted jesus with palm leaves oh and of course check your feet for corn before you go out dancing yeah. Corn, yeah. man. I mean, I will say this: my understanding of friends who have corns on their feet, it'd be pretty impossible to miss them on yourself. But uh, yeah. be suspicious of your neighbors; <laughs> they might have corns. They might have corns. If someone is not dancing, it doesn't mean that they have corns on their feet, and vice versa. Somebody call it Quentin Tarantino, so he can film like the horror <laughs> version of this scene. Next is the horror version of this. Episode. Children of the corn.